LGUs or for the decade is free of charge. This is our social responsibility commitment towards the community. Um, pictures from our examinations, you can see Chief Roman is on monitoring the exam, closed book examination, videotape. Uh, pictures from our practical uh, sessions, the practical exam. <coughs> Again, the practical exam, those are the models, those are the people taking the exam at different stations. Uh, we were very proud to graduate our first batch of food safety compliance officer in the Philippines less than a year from the issuance of the requirement. So the Philippines now already has food safety compliance officers. And we were very proud that among our first batch were DOH employees and officials. Among them, our best student Honestly, I don't, listen, I'm very, very strict and objective when it comes to examinations. This guy was the top of the class. Although we had uh, other people, those who made it to the final stage yeah, after passing all the levels, and Mr. Nino uh, Ribato was the top of the class. Of course, he attended free of charge along with other 15 or more of the OH officials. We sent a uh, direct invitation to Secretary uh, Ganin and to uh, Dr. Kakilo's office for anyone who wants to attend. And we got calls from everywhere. We had people from hospitals, from Tondo Hospital, from LGUs, from everywhere. Anywhere that you are working with your age, you are welcome to come to your home, to your shop. And of course, congratulations to Nino uh, very soon. Now, how can you know that Nino is certified? <laughs> so this is one of the things that you'd like, especially for those who want to verify training and know who are the food safety compliance officers in the Philippines. Let's simply go to our website. And we have this very nice directory where you can search by city, you can search by last name, you can search by certificate number, uh, and you check just FSCO, and you can see now this is our first batch of FSCOs. So two from five star hotels, uh, one from a catering service, and Nino from the uh, Bureau of Indianage. So again, please uh, check our uh, database online, foodchat.com. Um, this is the... Uh, of course, accreditations, we're very proud also to show, of course, uh, our mall with DOH and uh, our letter of accreditation as an example from uh, the City Health Office of Montelupa, where now, by the way, the City Health Office of Montelupa, sanitary permit is not issued until you have the food safety training recognized by DOH and until the food establishment has one FSC. So it is happening. Okay? So it is happening. So things can be done. We just need to help each other. So when we approach LGUs, we expect some some support, not delay. Please help us. You are delivering the message of DOH. It's not a favor. Okay? Um, so this is our ripple effect. So what we are trying to do is a uh, top bottom from uh, or, or top down from DOH to LGUs or different LGUs, Makati, Kisu City, uh, 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 Mountain Rupa till now, and then from the bottom up, we're doing food establishments, consumers, things like that. <laughs> Um, different advantages to LGUs who accredit us and let us uh, um, um, help them. Of course, they'll be pioneers in food safety training. It is an income to the city health office because we uh, pay official fees for every certificate that is signed and sealed. There's a fee for that. And there are fees also for privilege. Anyone who would like to uh, provide their service, it is not free of charge. So we pay you to help us uh, for the invigilation and the certification. Uh, of course, hundreds of thousands saved on inspector training. Why? Because under the Food Safety Act of 2015 and the IRR, training of inspectors must be according to the ISO 17020 and the WHO risk-based inspection guidelines. Not anyone can do that training. And if you go to a private company that does it, they'll charge you thousands and thousands of pesos. We do it through free of charge. For the inspectors, they pass all the levels until FSCO. Once they're FSCO, we attend the food safety inspector training. They, can, they cannot attend the food safety inspector unless they pass the FSCO. Because we do not believe that the inspector can be less qualified than the person who is, uh, that they are inspecting. Yeah? And again, I'm talking about catering and service kitchens, LGUs, not manufacturing, not processing. <laughs> um, again, uh, this is uh, just we look about our uh, website, our Facebook page. Uh, this is just a proof that we've been supporting the FDA ever before that. In 2014, we were sponsoring the Food Safety Week um, under our original company, Trails and Fishers in Alabang, and we sponsored the events in uh, Cashier Hotel um, in Alabang. So uh, media, we're trying to show some TV shows, uh, educational videos. Now, last thing that I would like to show, because you guys were talking about it, and it is also available. You just have to add. So two types of things. Uh, first we have, let's say for example, this one. 
Just a quick video. Special event ng magluto para sa kanyang pamilya ngayon. Ang naisip na yung magluto ng pork chops, gamit ang karbo na nasa freezer. Ilabas sa ito at iniwan sa mesa upang mato o matulang. Tama bang ginawa niya? Nakaubalian na natin mga Pinoy na maglabas ng frozen meats at iwanan lamang ito sa mesa o kitchen counter hanggang sa matinaw pag-ilutin. Pero ayon sa safety guidelines ng Department of Health, hindi dapat inipira ng mga frozen meats para mato sa room temperature. Kapag nilagay sa freezer ang mga karne, hindi na mamatay ang mga bakterya na kumapit dito. Pinapabagalan ng freezing ang pagdami nito. Kung ito'y ilalabas at kaya ang matunaw sa room temperature, bibilis ang pagdami ng bakterya dito. May tatlong paraan upang magto ng frozen meat. Una, maaari itong i-defrost gamit ang microwave. Ngunit dapat ipinutuhin ka agad. Ang internal temperature ng frozen meat kapag pinunaw sa microwave ay aabot sa danger zone. Kaya ang bakterya na nangyari nito ay lalong dadami kung hindi manunuto ka agad. Pangalawa, maaari itong iwanan sa loob ng refrigerator hanggang matunaw ang karne o sa 24 hours. Hindi aabot sa danger zone ng temperature ng karne kaya hindi dadami ang bakterya na kumakapit nito. Kaya lang, medyo matagal ang proseso nito. Pangatlo, pwede ilagay ang mga karne sa plastic bag at ibabad sa malamig ng tubig. Kailangan palitan ng tubig kada tatlong minuto hanggang sa matunaw ang karne. Kapag lumambot ng maigi ang karne, maaari na itong matuin. Tandaan na dapat kumawat sa safe internal temperature mga pagkain. Maaaring gumamit ang food thermometer upang makasigurado na tama ang paglutus mga ito. Siguraduhin ang gagawin itong thermometer ang panginis. Dati, sarap na sarap ang mag-anak ni Vincent sa kanyang lutong pork chops. Hindi nila napansin na ito'y dating frozen dahil tama ang pagtunay at pagluto ni Vincent dito. Para sa mga karagdagat ng parumasyon tungkol dito, tumuha mo sa www.foodshop.com So, call it good, call it bad, it's an attempt. We're trying, okay, we're trying. Those videos were in heavily invested in those artificial crews from GMA and all videos are developed both in Tagalog and in English uh, at this quality. I haven't seen anything like that before, but again, we have time. Maybe some people say that this doesn't talk to all levels of the society and we are in process with Chef Boy to produce new uh, videos. Um, this is one kind of video and uh, this is the last video that I'll show you and then i end my presentation because I know you're very uh, hungry. Uh, these are some field videos, just an example about educational videos. This is from the, um, uh, the City Health of Montelupa Veterinarian um, Specialist. Hi, I'm Dr. Pamela B. Hernandez from the City Veterinarian of Montelupa City. I want to tell the public what to look for when buying raw meat, beef, pork, and poultry in public markets. First, look for the meat and meat products inspection certificate, which should be posted in every store. The carcass should also have stamps on it, like the pork and the beef. Not having the MMPIC would mean that the meat could be double dead. There is no assurance of the quality of the meat you're going to buy. Also, there are parasites that could be present in the meat you're buying, which could be transmissible to human, like Sarcocystis or Asteris, which is highly infectious to human. Meat slaughtered in backyard is not al allowed to be sold to the public, it is only allowed if it is only for personal consumption. To be sure that the meat that you are going to eat or consume is safe, look for the MMPIC or the Meat and Meat Products Inspection Certificate. Do not buy meat from stores without MMPIC. Thank you. So such things, uh, less than a minute, to put it on Facebook, we boost it for thousands of pesos for everyone to see. Uh, just for educational purposes and different levels, different events. This is what we are trying to do. And we just um, expect your help. Um, thank you very much. If you have any questions, okay. Thank you, Sam. Milby of Cavite. <laughs> so if you have questions, I think it's a very good endeavor that uh, an NGO like them would g give free services to the government. So baka mapupuno ka ng mga ano, after this, your talk, you will you will be very uh, like a superstar or mega star. A lot of requests from the LGUs. That's what you're waiting for. Oh, that's what that's what he's waiting for. 
such a very complimentary para ba nanonood ka ng OPM yung kumakanta ng mga Pinoy ng <laughs> Pilipino na kanta siya grabe siya mag ano mag yeah team you have a question uh, sir uh, thank you again for another great presentation action one after the other from uh, the DOST and for the our consumer group uh, thank you for that presentation um, yes we agree with you with the power of media in influencing our population about food safety and FDA also has a counterpart or we also have a project with that and that's why we created the FDA page and we have Twitter as well so every time uh, we have some advisories and uh, uh, announcements or materials that we can share to the public we post it through our FDA page so we acknowledge the power of social media now in, in influencing our population so uh, my question is sir you have great materials can we post it in our FDA page <laughs> Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. You're very sweet. Uh, there is no need to ask. This is a public property of the Philippines. Um, just keep everything as it is. Don't do any editing and uh, everything should be fine. It is available on our YouTube channel. If you want high resolution copies from us, we'll provide you to that on USBs. Again, free of charge. Anything to help the education uh, and the public health of the country on a government side or for the public is done for free. We take from the private sector and try to get some for ourselves and give the rest to the government, to the uh, food safety systems in the Philippines. So please, it's all available. Also, I forgot to tell you that we have posters and all the posters were already approved directly. Uh, they are modified and approved by the DOH, uh, Health Promotion Office. Um, also our brochures, everything went through the DOH Health Promotion Office and were stamped and approved. So those um, uh, posters, uh, we have different posters, educational, very, very nice. Um, I would have shown it to you, but it's not. Um, I mean, it's on, some of them is on our uh, Facebook page. If you'd like, we can send that to you. We also personalize them. So, for example, if you'd like to personalize it to your city, we can personalize it to your city. As long as you keep the logo of DOH and our logo on it, there's no problem for that. With the color theme and everything, we send it to you. Print it on any sizes that you like. Post it anywhere you want. Okay. Thank you, sir. We can maybe we can talk later. <laughs> Do you have samples of your posters? Oh, okay. So he's prepared. He's Boy Scout. Uh, everything he has uh, an answer. Ma'am Heidi, yes. sa ano lang, yung kay Sweet Team na ano? Sweet Concern. Yung ano ba ang adjective niya? Sweet Team of FDA. Yes. Oh, kasi tama yun na uh, very eager siya na magamit sa FDA. Pero dun sa bagong memorando of agreement na paggamit pa lang ng IEC, hindi ko nilang nalaman. According to legal, and we're very lucky that we have the legal officer of the Department of Health, another handsome one, we have attorney big, turn to the table, or say, with your, ayan. Ano, sino artista naman artista siya? Artista naman yan. Sino ba yan? Sino ka mukha mo, sir? Si po? Si o, Vic Soto? Vic Soto of DOH. Vic Soto of DOH. Sir? Ayan. Hindi, ayan, yung comment mo sa paggamit ng IEC materials, pag, Kaya para aware din kami when to use the IEC materials from private, from other sectors. Okay, yung, uh, yung paggamit kasi ng BOH logo natin is uh, it should uh, have uh, yung prior appearance uh, sa BOH mismo. So, uh, from uh, legal, uh, from the end user to legal, then so on. So uh, I don't think uh, if uh, we have already a memorandum or for us. Yeah. yeah, we have a memorandum of agreement with uh, Dr. Bakino. It's almost the signs already cleared by the legal office. It was cleared by the FDA and it was cleared by the promotion promotion office every poster yeah. every website was reviewed yeah. 
uh, carefully. All the inputs that they asked for were done. We have all the, even our book for us to put the logo on the book. It was done, approved, um, and only after the DOH stamped and signed, we were able to publish it. And actually, they asked us for copies so that they can print it and use it, and we provide it. I think future. fair IEC material. For example, uh, this type of brochure that is only the seal that will be allowed. Yes. yes. Then another one for the video, another seal. For another type have, of video, another seal. Yes. If we don't have uh, the clearance of DOH, we never use the logo. This is why we are very confident. I mean, this is a DOH event. <laughs> So oh, those are the posters. This one is about using different knives um, and different chopping boards for cutting uh, foods. Um, this one is about checking out, uh, I mean, buying the chilled or the frozen items last thing before you pay the counter. So it's all uh, talking to the public. Um, always cover your hair before preparing food. Very simple messages if you can just uh, always wash your hands. Uh, always keep food covered. Very simple, and uh, always keep hot food above 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, keep cold food below 5 degrees Celsius. Uh, always throw food properly in the fridge or in the microwave, and never leave food uh, at room temperature for more than two hours for the temperature danger zone. And finally, my favorite, if you cook food for your kids to take to school, make sure you eat it within two hours. Because after that, of course, if they cook, like they say, cheese and omelet and mayonnaise, and then the sandwich is the high potential, you know, hazardous sandwich, you keep it in their bag for six, seven hours, it's already a bacterial culture. <laughs> it is. Do you have this in Filipino? Uh, or, or, the posters? Or all in English. Well, we can, this is very easy. I can, you can do it in Filipino also, if you uh, want. Yeah. If you want. Yeah, because we can customize it in our, uh, in our, in our cities or in our... In our, uh, the design is on us. Anything that you want for the design is on us, as long as we not change the design uh, uh, stated by the Department of Health. Anything uh, like printing and this, you can print as much as you like or as many as you want. Okay, thank you again, Sam. Any other question? Yes, Pa. Hi, good morning, sir. My name is Franz from the Department of Interior and Local Government. So, I personally applaud you with these um, activities that you have done. Or, um, may I ask if there are any activities that, or existing activities that you do in, to, in order to connect with the LGU primarily? So, of course. Man, yes, of course. Uh, we have Lex, our cameraman, and our uh, accreditation <laughs> officer. Maybe some of you know him already, and ourselves. We have uh, accreditation department. The job of the accreditation department officers is to go from one LGU to another to present uh, our projects. Uh, by June,